what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed i'm going to try to film this video without too much interruption from the paw patrol in the background because today they're on 10 for whatever reason they slept in today so child they're all the way charged up y'all i don't know where 2021 has to be but obviously sis gotta be somewhere because she is getting up out of here. October went by so fast and my birthday month, which is next month, better not follow suit. Speaking of birthdays, a happy 13th birthday to Adrielle, whose birthday is today. And I just hope today is a great day for you. I hope it has been a great day for you. I hope I said your name right. Without further ado, and while my kids are quiet in the background, let's get into the video. Today's video is about a guy who criminally is known as Joseph Paul Franklin, but he was actually born James Clayton Vaughn. And see, the thing is, I always chuckle a little bit when y'all are in the comments feeling all violated about somebody having the same birthday as you or the same zodiac sign as yourself or the same name. But um, today, I know exactly how violated you feel. I understand you now because sis was born with my last name and I didn't like that. To keep confusion down, I'm just going to refer to him as the name that he is most notorious for which is Joseph. Joseph Paul Franklin was born in Mobile, Alabama on April 13th of 1950 making him an Aries. See Aries y'all have been on the bench for a while so I don't want to hear how you feel personally attacked today okay. Joseph was born into a very poor family and he was the second of four children all of which were raised in a very impoverished and volatile home situation and little Joseph will use books as his escape from his toxic environment. His father James is a World War II veteran turned butcher and his mother Helen she works as a waitress. Now what makes their home life so volatile and toxic is the fact that their father James he's an alcoholic who came and left sporadic Sometimes he would be gone for months and they would not know where he was or if he was in fact okay. When Joseph was eight years old, he leaves one time, child, and he just never returns. Just never comes back at all. He up and leaves Miss Helen to take care of all of these kids by herself. And this added an amount of stress to her. Not to justify this at all but she was very frustrated being a waitress trying to take care of all of these kids now all alone helen was already a very strict parent unfortunately though with the departure of her husband she takes all of these frustrations that she is feeling as a single parent out on the kids and she begins to beat them according to joseph this was not the extent of her mistreatment of them he also claims that he was rarely given enough food to eat as a child and was the main target of helen's rage which is assumed to be the reason why he developed into a very shy, withdrawn child, but that was not the case. Joseph becoming very withdrawn and reserved didn't have anything to do with his parents' treatment. He actually felt very different from other children and he preferred to be alone where he could be comfortable being himself without feeling like the weirdo that he was. By high school, Joseph becomes extremely interested in Christianity and develops an obsession over the religion. He spends just about all of his free time visiting different churches Churches and claims to have visited almost every church in the state of Alabama. He was very interested in learning all of the things Christianity. Now at age 17, he decides that school is just not for him, at least not anymore. And he does not really have a plan for it. after he had dropped out of high school. He just knew that high school was no longer for him and he was done. But luckily for him, he is able to avoid being drafted due to his poor eyesight. And so he just spends the next year of his life at home really doing nothing at all. That is, until he meets new to the neighborhood 16 year old Bobby and he is telling little Miss Bobby all of the things to make her little 16 year old heart flutter. He is promising to take care of her. He is promising her stability which I don't know how he was promising that girl when he was sleeping on his mama's couch and didn't have it himself. Whatever the case these are the lies that he fed her and so she falls deeply in 16 year old love with him believing all of the things that she's being told and just two weeks after the two of them actually meet they get married baby that was a strong two weeks okay i don't want a two weeks like it please now, unfortunately for little miss bobby the joseph that she had gotten to know or thought she had gotten to know over those two weeks was nothing like the real Joseph. But his true nature begins to reveal itself very shortly after they had signed those papers. 
And it seemed as though it happened literally overnight. There was no gradual buildup to what he becomes. He becomes extremely violent and unpredictable. This man will literally leave church, come home and beat her. And she was extremely taken aback by the person that he had become or was all along unbeknownst to her and she wanted to leave him but she was so afraid that he would find her and kill her and so she puts up with this for four months until finally she does get the courage to gather her little things and leave him after his wife leaves is when he legally changes his name from james to joseph and then he becomes a drifter he decides you know what i don't want to plant roots and just stay in one little area i want to see what the world has out there for me at this point joseph truly belongs to the streets okay and in said streets during the late 60s is when he begins dabbling in white supremacy and just as he had become obsessed with christianity at the point in which he was introduced to it he becomes obsessed with this he is reading all of the literature on the subject he is practicing his little Nazi stance in the mirror. Not only that, he began sewing swastikas into his clothing. He wanted it to be known just by looking at him that this is what he was about and what he represents. He gets two tattoos, one of an American bald eagle and the other of a bloody Grim Reaper. No matter where his drifting leads him, no matter where he ends up, what part of the streets he is located, one thing is for sure, he is always able to find his brethren wherever he goes which this is america so of course that's not hard to do his shift from christianity into nazism was quick and extreme and he develops a very strong passion for his newfound beliefs but believing just was not good enough for little joseph you see joseph develops this very strong urge to act out on his bigotry that soon becomes too strong to continue to ignore as the days progress he becomes increasingly obsessed with those he considered a part of the inferior races and child their presence amongst him in the outside world just bothered him so much specifically interracial couples he just hated to see the girls out here down with the swirl. It was just unacceptable. On Labor Day of 1976, he spots and stalks this interracial couple. And Cha, as soon as he gets the opportunity to, he pops out of nowhere and maces them. See, Joseph wanted to cleanse the world of people that he considers inferior especially the blacks and the jews and while this doesn't do much for that cause it was a start for him a test of the waters if you will and it actually gives him a lot of satisfaction and now that he is no longer spending his free time in the church he decides that he will spend it somewhere doing something that would in fact enable him to be more productive in that quest to rid the world of these people practicing his marksmanship now despite being partially blind in one eye and fully blind in the other he becomes very proficient now as time goes on his hatred and ignorance for those who are not white becomes so strong that it begins to interfere with his daily life child he is just driven by this rage a year after the macing incident and into his target practice he decides that it is now time to take things a step further in his quest to eliminate the inferior. Now he sets his sights on a synagogue in Chattanooga, Tennessee, firebombing and completely destroying it. Fortunately though, there is no loss of life, but seeing as though that was his goal, but of course he does not see it that way because that was his intent. Days later, he targets yet another interracial couple. You know, he just, he just hated to see it. He ambushes this young couple in a mall parking lot, shooting them both. Both of them were 23 years old. At this point, it becomes Joseph's belief that God himself wants Joseph to start a race war. And so he embarks on this murderous spree, supporting himself financially by robbing banks along the way now it is quite obvious that he particularly despises interracial couples so they become his first priority he wants to eliminate as many of them 
as he possibly can. Armed with several rifles and his little heart full of hatred child, Joseph moves state to state killing innocent people simply because of their skin color and or religious beliefs for the next three years. Now he spends a lot of his time practicing, preparing, and planning. He buys a bunch of different color hair dyes so he can switch up his appearances every now and then. Different styling products so you know one day it could be laid over to the left and maybe on Wednesday he has a couple of spikes. The most important thing to him was switching up his appearance often to avoid being recognized and or captured. He also invests in several different styles of clothing and he is even able to switch vehicles often as as well. Now this is where I suspected that he might have had a lot of support from his brethren but I was completely convinced at this next point. He somehow gains access to police scanners and is able to listen to them while fleeing the scene to know what way not to go and to have of course the inside information and stay on top of what the police were privy to and where they were. Now Sis gets a little ahead of himself and adds President Jimmy Carter to his list of targets because of his pro-civil rights views but of course he is unable to gain access or find the opportunity to actually carry out an assassination. Now he also plans to take out Reverend Jesse Jackson but his security detail makes it basically impossible to do as well. So he had to turn back to us regular civilians. On October 8th, he finds a more obtainable target in St. Louis, Missouri. Hiding in the bushes outside of a synagogue, he fires at a group attending services. Now, sir, you was once a part of the church. Now, if you was down there practicing your little Christianity and somebody came and shot some little pellets at you during your prayer, you wouldn't have liked that but here you are. This incident results in the death of 42 year old Gerald Gordon and two others being wounded. Again, with the help of his police scanner, he makes it away from the scene without being apprehended. And after this, he does lay low for a couple of months. But of course, with that little hatred in his heart, it was only a matter of time before he was out in the streets again. And on March 6th of 1978, he ambushes and shoots Hustler Magazine publisher Larry Flint and his lawyer Jane Reeves in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Both guys were very seriously injured in this incident. Now, the reason for this incident, Hustler Magazine had just displayed some interracial relations, which of course he does not support and he does not appreciate them advertising as if this is something that is okay. Now, one thing about Joseph, he was not ashamed of his ignorance at all. Sis did not hide his views from anyone. In fact, he took every opportunity to express them and let it be known that this is the way that he thinks and he feels. He did not have much luck out there in the world of dating after his first wife had left him. And so to satisfy his adult urges he would frequent the ladies of the evening and would actually ask them where he could find black pimps so he could kill them and in one instance he actually practically begs one of the ladies to assist him in taking the life of a black bellhop that works at the hotel that they had used to make their little adult exchange. Now she of course refused and was kind of freaked out by the whole thing. She had done what she came there to do and she was not about to help him with that. He travels back to Tennessee and on July 29th of 1978, the same year, while hiding in the bushes outside of a pizza hut. He shoots and kills a black man by the name of Bryant Tatum with a 12 gauge shotgun. He also shoots Bryant's white girlfriend, Nancy, seriously injuring her, but she does survive the incident. The following year, he begins a romantic relationship with a woman and the two of them get married and also have a daughter. But unfortunately, he is still all up in everybody else's business. And this is not a Enough to stop him from continuing his horrible little spree. This same year, he kills Taco Bell manager Harold McIver, shooting him through the Taco Bell window from 150 yards away. Now, it was not just the police scanner and his different disguises that helped him to get away. All of his crimes were committed from a great distance like this. Despite his little shizu eyes that he can barely see out of, Sis is an exceptional shooter. I just don't understand. 
he really had to be committed because girl you can't even see 1980 is the busiest year of all for little joseph in may he shoots and kills a civil rights activist after seeing him with a white woman he wasn't even sure that the two of them were dating he just saw them together and decided you know what that in itself is enough of a violation days after this he stations himself on a highway overpass with this little rifle now his goal was to take out an interracial couple and he was sure that he would see one because apparently they were you know everywhere but instead he spots two young boys 14 year old Daryl Lane and his 13 year old cousin Dante Brown as they are walking to the store and he fires at both of them. Daryl the 14 year old dies at the scene and the younger cousin Dante dies unfortunately a few hours later at the hospital. This disgusting little bitch had put two bullets in each child. This had taken place in Ohio. About two weeks later he had made his way over to Pennsylvania where he shoots and kills black 22 year old Arthur Smothers and white 16 year old Kathleen M. I don't want to butcher her last name and I cannot pronounce it so we just gonna leave it at M out of respect. They were an interracial couple that he had spotted crossing the street while he was posted a, a little distance away waiting on someone like them to come into his view. In this instance, he had used a high powered rifle. He goes back to his little collection and switches that out for a 44 caliber Ruger. And just 10 days later, shoots two hitchhikers, 19 year old Nancy Santamero and 26 year old Vicky Durian in West Virginia. These two women were both white. He had picked up the two young hitchhikers and he was well on his way to taking them where they had asked to go. But upon eavesdropping and listening to their conversation, he hears one of them speak about her black boyfriend. At that point, he had become enraged and decided that the two of them both had to die. An arrest and conviction is made for the murder of these two women. However, it is not Joseph who is arrested for this. It is a man by the name of Jacob and Jacob receives a life sentence without the possibility of parole. On August 20th of 1980, Joseph takes out his final victims in Salt Lake City, Utah. 20 year old Ted Fields and 18 year old David Martin are both black and they're friends and they also work out together. Now on this particular day, the two of them go jogging with two of their white classmates, two young ladies. They are jogging jogging at Liberty Park when all of a sudden they are sprayed with bullets. Both men are killed, both women are also hit, however they survive their injuries. Following this incident, a nationwide manhunt ensues and the FBI gets involved. Now at this point, this is a little too afraid, it's a little too risky for him to go into a bank and demand money like he had done to support himself in the past. He travels down to Lakeland, Florida and decides, you know what, I got some blood I can sell. Why not do that? He goes into a blood bank, gives his little ID over, trying to get himself a little coin. And the lady that was assisting in taking his blood recognizes him from his tattoos. It would have been the shizzle eyes for me, honestly. But she calls into the FBI, gives a tip, and lets them know that he is down here at the bank, girl, the blood bank. And he is trying to cash in on this blood of his. So y'all need to come pick him up. Like, what do I do? Do I take the blood? Do I, do I not? Law enforcement responds immediately and he is arrested. And once they get him down to the station, he does not waste much time confessing to his crimes. He was very much proud of what he had done. He had no shame whatsoever. And so he begins telling them all of the things. He confesses to having an estimated 22 victims total. In addition to that, he confesses to the two bombings at the synagogue and 16 total robberies of both banks and people that he had just robbed on the street. And when I say he was proud of everything he had done, Sis was proud because he not only tells them the things that he was successful in committing, he also gives them a list of the attempts that he had made that were failed as well as his list of intended targets. Child, just dumb. 
some of the crimes that he had confessed to, they had no idea who was behind them. Like the Hustler magazine publisher and his lawyer, they had no idea who was behind that. And Larry Flynn was actually left paralyzed after that. With his confessions, they had also realized that there was a man incarcerated for life currently paying for a crime that he did not in fact commit. A psychiatrist evaluates him and testifies on his behalf that he is not mentally competent enough to stand trial. She also diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia and was adamant that he should not be fully held accountable for his actions. You see, something just tells me that this was a card holding member herself and that is what that's about. In addition to Sis being in his corner, there is also another witness that could help his defense and was actually willing to testify. But he refuses this witness because the witness was black. Child, I said to myself when I first heard that, it's ignorant, you're being ignorant. But then I thought about it. If somebody like Michelle Blair was willing to testify on my behalf, I would tell her just to go on to hell and don't worry about me. So, I guess I can kind of get it, but not really because this person hasn't done anything. They're just black. The prosecution could only definitively tie him to seven of his proclaimed victims. He receives life sentences and the death penalty from several states. However, the state of Missouri is the state that got the chance to hold on to that girl before they were ready to take him to his final resting place. Now, he does not just go to his cell and waits to die. He attempts to gain clemency, saying that a government that forbids killing amongst its citizens should not be in the business of killing people itself. He said they were hypocrites, and so they needed to release him at once, or at least commute him down to life with the possibility of parole. He sits on death row for a couple of years, and then he decides to make an appeal to the Supreme Court with this argument. And in August of 2013, they pretty much just tell him, sir, get out of here with that mess. Not only do they reject his appeal, they also assign him an execution date for three months later. On November 20th of 2013, he was given his little lethal dose and returned to Senda. After serving 13 years in prison, Jacob Beard, who was wrongfully convicted of killing the two women, was released from prison. You know what? People who are wrongfully convicted like that, they should get some money when they leave prison. Like, it is just not okay that they falsely accuse and convict people. And then when they find out that they really didn't do it, they're just like, my bad. Like, no. Put me in a condo and give me some money. Well, guys and gals, that is pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to give the video a like on your way out. Let me know your thoughts down below. I know y'all gonna sound off on this one, child. Because uh, I have a lot of thoughts as well. One of the main ones being that I don't think Sis acted alone. I feel like he was backed by his brethren. Which is part of the reason why he was able to do this for three years without being called. But I cannot wait to hear what your thoughts are down below. Let me know. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Scorpio season, Scorpio season. All my fellow Scorpios are out there tearing up the streets, figuratively, not literally, including 13-year-old Adriel. You might be 13, baby, but you know, you're part of the elite zodiac sign, the angels of the zodiac. And so, yeah. And his mother, Helen, she worked as a school teacher. Was she a school teacher? She was a waitress. Visiting different churches. I was going to say churches. is Gee. Now, as time goes on, his hatred and ignorance for those who are not white, it only intensified. And two others being, and two others being wounded. Kill a bellhop that worked at the, I was going to say restaurant. That ain't where you have relations with a lady of the evening. I mean, you can, honestly. And for this, he receives a life sentence and the death penalty. Penalty what? As well as the death penalty. I was going to say penalty again. Jacob Blake, the wrongfully accused. Oh, did I call him Jacob Beard earlier or Jacob Blake? I think I said Beard. I think I said Blake. But I cannot wait to hear what your thoughts are. Thoughts.